Hey guys, welcome back to Range of Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is a video on the five C's. Only we are going to recreate five C's from the items found in wilderness, natural materials around us. That's right, cutting, combustion, cordage, container, and cover. We're going to recreate all five. Stand by. Now that first item is part of our kit is that cutting tool. Typically we would carry large cutting tools and a variety of cutting tools like this parang. We could carry an axe or a saw, a larger knife, smaller knife, carving knives. We could carry a lot of different cutting tools with us into the field. Unfortunately, this time we're not going to have the luxury of a large parang. We're not going to have the luxury of our combat knife to actually recreate things from the landscape. We are going to have to rely on rocks to actually act as our cutting tool and we're going to need to use just a little bit of ingenuity with this rock this tight grain rock that we can actually break shards off of to act as our cutting tool for our five-piece kit that second item is going to be a combustion device typically this would be our ferro rod flint and steel kit maybe even a big lighter in our pocket for this video we're going to make a primitive bow drill set only Let's remember that we're going to have to use those small shards of rock to actually recreate this set from the material around the area, get an ember and blow it into flame. Like I said, our ferro rod with that 90 degree spine on our knife is typically what we rely on for bushcraft and survival. But we have a couple extra tricks up our sleeves using a cattail as a char material to carry fire. Cordage is that third item as part of our five C's. Typically we go to the field with man-made cordage, things like bank line or parachute cord that we can use for survival. If we don't have cordage, we can recreate cordage. We're going to see a couple of ways we can actually recreate cordage out the landscape fairly easily. The hardest part about cordage is besides making it or having the skills to make it is actually using it in survival because it is temperamental and can snap on us like when using a bow drill string. But we're going to demonstrate cordage and add it to our kit. That fourth item is going to be a container. This is probably the hardest thing to recreate out of the five C's, only because there aren't that many containers ready to go off the landscape that we can simply harvest and then use to treat our water, cook food, make medicine, and then travel with water over distance to self-rescue. We should prefer a metal container, some sort of bush pot to take with us, at least one liter in volume. That way we can actually use chemical means to treat water and be fairly certain that we're getting the right dosage. A good bush pot is going to be one that can boil water, cook food, obviously make medicine, but is self-locking with a lid that can double as a container like our stowaway bush pot. We can also have some sort of water canteen, a metal single wall water canteen will work great. And then we can obviously improvise from the items around us. We can use fire to hollow out logs to create burn bowls. We can obviously use that fire to make smaller burn bowls or cups like this noggin. And then we can even use different materials from the landscape to create containers to hold things like tinder, rocks, such as this basket, and even use burn bowl techniques to hollow out spoons for acting as a food shovel. And that fifth and final item is going to be a cover element. In this case, we have our poncho, but it's too easy in the landscape, especially with all the green vegetation, to simply construct some sort of overhang and bed to sleep on to act as an improvised shelter for the night. We are going to make cutting tools out of this tight grain rock that I've had in my collection now for a little while. This tight grain rock is something we want to look for to actually make cutting tools. We're not going to get large stones off of this just based off its size and how it breaks. We're going to have smaller cutting tools but we can take a large rock and then just hit it against our tight grain rock to break off small pieces of material to act as cutting tools. These small little shards that we break off are going to come in different shapes and sizes, but they're going to be great for us to actually apply a little bit of ingenuity out in the field and use them to our benefit based off their size and shape to cut down material. Now that we just have our small shard rock with a jagged edge in the shape of a hook, we can start looking for cordage. Cordage is at a premium out in survival. And there's a plant in the area that I know will work to get us a little bit of cordage. We're going to make several different types of cordage in this video, but this first type, we're going to use a plant called stinging nettle. This plant is a tall stalk that grows in the ditches, a ditch weed, in moist soil with a lot of sunlight. There's one in the area and we can work our way down to the base, take out our rock shard and actually cut around the base to harvest this plant. As long as we grab from the base with our hand and move up 
away from the ground in the direction of the top of the stock. We'll avoid the stinging nettle and harvest this and take it back to camp. First thing we need to do after harvesting the stinging nettle is remove the leaves and prep the outside of the bark. We can remove the leaves very easily. We're going to start at the base of the stalk itself, holding it with one hand and then grabbing with the other. All we're going to do is pull the stalk and let our hand glide over top, collecting up those leaves and removing them. Once we have those removed, we can move up and pull off any leaves that we've missed. And by this point, the sting of the nettle should be gone and we can work with this easily. Now that our stock is prepped, we're ready to break up the fibers of the stock itself. How we do this is using rocks again, caveman style. We have one large rock as our mortar, one smaller rock as our pestle. And all we're going to do is work our way down the stock, pressing in and crushing the fibers in between those rocks as we go. We're going to hear crunches, and that's the fibers breaking up. Eventually, once we get toward the end, there will be enough of a break and fissure in the stock itself. We can actually split it and get ready to actually harvest that outer bark. The stock is split and we are ready to actually harvest the bark. All we have to do now is find the middle or somewhere near the middle of the pithy area in the bark. We snap it in half and then easily pull it from one side to the other exposing a little bit of the bark. We can hold that bark in between our fingers and now all we have to do is pull and the pith inside of the stock will fall away and all we're left with is bark that we can turn into cordage. Now what seems to work best with this method is taking the fibers that we just collected, placing them out in the sun to fully dry. Once they're fully dry, we can collect them back up and actually go soak them to clean them off and get them a little bit more pliable to turn into cordage. This is what seems to work best in my opinion. With our cordage ready to go, now all we have to do is grab a few strands, make them as even as possible in width to get a good diameter cordage of whatever we're trying to go for, and then begin our cordage, and we're going to do that by starting with a twist. We grab one of those pieces of outer bark that we have and begin twisting with our thumb and forefinger of each hand in opposite directions. That twist will become tight, and eventually it will want to twist around itself. Once we have it twisted around itself, we could continue this process, and this is called twisting fibers technique to make cordage, a very simple technique that we can use. But we're going to use a different technique to create cordage a lot faster. Faster technique is called reverse wrap to ply cordage. All we do is grasp the twist that we already have. We're going to have a top strand now and a bottom strand. We twist the top strand away from us, grabbing the bottom one simultaneously, and then rotating it over. We continue this process as we make cordage. Once we're done making that cordage to our desired length, or if we need to add more material, we can splice that in. But once we're done, we should have viable cordage that we can use for some survival tasks. Another technique at our disposal is making bark cordage. And we can do that by harvesting material from around the area, like small thicket offshoots that are going to have bark that is easily peeled off. We want material that doesn't have too many offshoots. That way we have long strips of bark as we peel it off this material. We go back to that rock shard we have as our cutting tool, cut around the base of this material, saw it off, and then we can take this back to camp to process for cordage. This bark material comes off very easily. All we have to do is make a small cut at the end where we harvest it around the section and then simply begin to peel off the bark from the body of the plant. Once we have it ready, we can just take long strips off that material and we have what will be our cordage. The bark material that we don't use as part of our cordage that we're going to make, we can wrap up and place in the drink to keep it pliable. This is a very simple process, and if you've watched my videos, you've seen me do this before as a demonstration. All we're going to do is take and make three different weaves, and we're going to connect these by an overhand knot and create a French braid. We're actually going to double up the bark, make it a little bit stronger, and because of the difference in length of our bark, this will kind of cover our bases for having a shorter or longer strand. But we create that overhand knot, tying all the pieces together, divide it up into three, and we simply just take the outside over the middle every time opposite sides and continue this French braid weave 
as we work along our cordage. We'll notice it getting really tight and creating a strong cordage. We continue this process until we get to the end of our bark. Once we get to that end of bark, we're just going to create another simple overhand knot and this is going to give us some basic cordage, very strong cordage to use for a variety of purposes. Everything from a pack frame to carrying gear, doing pull-ups and getting some PT in the field, as well as possibly even a bow drill string that we can use to get friction fire. Speaking of friction fire, that is going to be the method that we get fire with out here in the field. Cottonwood is the best tree to do that, at least in this area. The bark is great for tinder, and the dead branches make perfect bow drill sets. Brought back some great pieces and tinder material that we're going to use for our primitive bow drill friction fire set. One of the pieces broke off fairly easily, and it left somewhat of a mark that we can actually use as the top of our hearth board. Lucky us. But we're going to take our rocks again and we created several different pieces of rock shards off of our main rock to use for tools in constructing our bow drill friction fire set. We're just going to use one of the rocks as a drill to drill in those divots that we need for both our bearing block and our hearth board. And then we've got some other pieces that have straight edges, almost like chisels, that we can use to actually form our spindle. Very shocking that a lot of these pieces are actually working fairly well as sculpting items and carving items that give us some clear cuts, beaver chews, as well as forming that tip of that spindle for vampires. We've harvested a small toggle off the landscape that we're going to use in conjunction with our bow for our bow drill and the string itself. The toggle is going to act as kind of an anchor point or a stopper to hold that cordage in place. We're going to take one of those little rocks that we have, the chisel one, and we're going to split the other end of our bow drill bow and use that as an attachment point. Preparation is key. Having that tinder bundle ready to go prepped ahead of time is crucial. We need to make sure that tinder bundle is good to go and that it will accept the most minute amount of heat so we can get our survival fire started the first time. All right, the tinder bundle is ready, the bow drill is ready, and we are ready to get an ember and blow it into flame for our survival fire. Only, it just wasn't meant to be today because we made a classic mistake of having that notch carved too close to the end of our hearth board and it broke right off. Attempt number two fail, the cordage snapped right in the middle. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Yeah, we're going to sacrifice one of those boot laces. We're not playing around today. So we get out that boot lace to act as our bow drill string. And wouldn't you know, it's not real 550 cord, and that snaps too. All right, we are done playing around with this. At first, the notch broke because we had it too close to the end of our hearth board. Then the natural cordage failed. Then we had even our boot lace, which is supposed to be 550 cord, fail on us as well. This just goes to show you that even though you have all the skills and you have all the backup plans in the world, we need to have items in our pockets. Even just something as small as a six foot hank of paracord can make the difference between life and death in a survival situation. Having that cordage in our pockets means that we can actually construct a bow drill set and use that cordage and be confident that we can get an ember with it out in the field. We're finally able to produce that ember, get that ember on our catch, and now we can dump it into our tender bundle and blow it into flame. This is probably the best part of the entire process, being able to just create fire by adding just oxygen to the heat from the ember into our tender bundle and the fuel there and blowing it into flame. With that ember, we've got to be careful though, we start out blowing slowly at first, and then as we see more of that ember grow, and we see more smoke coming out of the back side of that tinder bundle, we can increase our breath and force, and finally have that flame that we need to get all the smalls and tinder we have collected and kindling lit, so we can actually get our fire going. And now for our next trick, we're gonna be making container, that fourth item that we need as part of our five C's. Now we made this burn bowl ahead of time, but for demonstration's sake, all we have to do is take out an ember from the fire and place it 
onto the log, add oxygen, and begin to burn the material out, creating that burn bowl. It takes a long time and a lot of effort and work to actually create a burn bowl, even one of just this size. But once we're done burning it out, all we have to do is take our stick, scrape out the inside, put out the embers, and then dump the ash into the fire. We are going to use a little technique called rock boil. With a burn bowl like this, the rock boil is the best technique to treat that water make it safe to drink. So we're going to take rocks out of our basket, dump them in the fire, cover the rocks with the fire, and heat them up. While those rocks are cooking, we're going to go down to the creek again. We're going to clean out our burn bowl, get rid of all that excess ash. We can take a little bit of mud and rock from the creek bed itself, scrape out the inside, and clean it out as best as possible so we're not drinking a bunch of char and ash from the water. Then we can fill this up, and you'll see this is holding water. We're good to go. Once we collect up our water, now that our log and our burn bowl is holding water, we go back to that fire. We're going to get ready to extract those rocks out of the fire and then add them directly into our burn bowl with the water and rock boil that water to make it safe to drink. Once that water has stopped boiling, it's still going to be hot, so we're going to use just some improvised tongs to get the rocks out of our burn bowl and our water. Once it's out of there, we're just going to let it cool until it's safe to drink. Drink that water, and now we are hydrated and have a way to treat water and stay hydrated out in the field. While we're still here by the fire, I'm going to show you a little trick. We can take cattails from around the area and we can turn these cattails into ways to actually start fire or carry fire with us over terrain and distance because we can place this cattail in the fire. It will begin to burn and smolder at the tip of that cattail and because of the fuel there that's compact and compressed, it will continue to burn and smolder long enough for us to actually walk over terrain to our next camp or get to wherever we're going. But it's too easy to take the tip of that apply it to a tinder bundle, add oxygen, and blow it into flame just like the ember from our bow drill. Now as an added treat for you guys, one thing I rarely ever do on my channel, unless it's just food from the landscape, frogs, fish, or different things that I happen to find or catch as part of my survival videos, is cooking food. I rarely ever cook food on my channel, but wanted to do something special today since we're out in the field and we're going to make bannock on a stick. Bannock on a stick is a great way to cook bread in the field. We could use our pots and pans but if we don't have those and we have the flour and baking powder and some salt or sugar or whatever we're going to put in our bannock, this is a simple easy way to actually create some way to cook bread over a fire, prove it, get it hot, and then a tasty meal afterwards. So what we can do is just mix up our flour in our pan, stir it back to life, add water slowly at first. We don't want to add too much water because then it'll just turn to a paste. We want to add water and then finally get it to a point where that dough is forming. Once we have that dough formed, we just roll it between our hands and make it long. And then we can just wrap it around a stick fairly easily. Once we have it around that stick with a sharp end, we plant it in the ground over the fire and let it cook. As it cooks, we just simply have to rotate the stick to all four sides or all around that bread and let it cook as we go. You'll notice that next to our fire, that cattail is still burning, still smoldering, good to go. But we can just take that, continue to cook it over and over again until the outside is crispy or brown and we check the inside to make sure it's not too doughy. We can even remove the bread from the stick because it's so hot. And then we can go sit down in our shelter and enjoy our nice bannock from the fire. Good to go. All right, guys. Well, I hope you like this video. A very intense video on the five C's and recreating those items from the landscape around us with a lot of tips and tricks and different skills 
all packed into this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.